And this, that's the, that's the, that's the serious business. If you're still having a problem figuring out where the subject is in a sentence, or more specifically, where the subject is in a clause, then you're probably not going to be able to always determine the proper plurality of the verb. You got to know where the subject is. That's, you know, that, that's without saying. You got to know where the subject is. Okay. In other words, the verb does not control the subject. Always remember that. The verb does not control the subject. The subject controls the verb. Okay, that's, if you just want an easy way to think about that. Okay. But I think we got the basic. This is like the basic rule. Rule one, if you want to call it. This is the bear. I think we got that one. I think we came to class with that one. So I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on that basic rule. OK. Uh, unreal, conditional. These are sentences, uh, uh, conditional sentences. Sentences, we use was instead of were. You remember that? And we're talking about if clauses. We all know what conditionals are, and we all know what subordinated conjunctions begin those type of clauses. Yes, I don't have to ask you to list the conditional subordinated conjunctions, right? Okay, so I have to do that. Now, okay. In other words, this is a sentence that expresses or, or something that is hypothetical or contrary to fact. If clauses use were, if the pronoun is singular, and if clauses, uh, if clauses refer to an event in the present, let's look at it. If I, there's the pronoun, if I were you, I would not do this. So, sorry. if clauses use were, even if the pronoun is singular. But I think we already knew that. That's just, just refreshing your memory on that. Okay, let's get down to some rules. Rule number one. I said that was rule number one, but I mean, really, that rule, it should be the understood rule. But let's look at this one. Two singular subjects connected by or and or, we take a singular verb. I think as far as these rules, they go from easy to difficult. Somebody in here, I can't remember which group, I think it was the purple group. I think. I can't remember may have been okay but uh, I want a, a group in here pointed this rule out and yes you were correct this is a rule example my aunt or my uncle is why is and not are because of or or te tells us that we're talking about a singular subject even though we see two subjects here they're connected by or so they're singular Yes, we got it. All right. Rocket science, not yet? No? Okay. We're still within our capabilities to understand. All right. So let's just go ahead to rule two. I don't think that was a big deal. Rule number two, my favorite and yours. It's kind of the same. The only difference here is we're adding ors and nors, little brother, big brother, because there's more letters, I guess. Two singular subjects connected by either or or neither nor require a singular verb. Less, it's just like rule number one. Neither one nor Carmen is. So even though we got two subjects, they're connected by e, neither nor. In the same case with either or, we're going to look at it as one subject. Singular to rule one. Let us move on to rule three. I think that, I don't think anybody here got that one, or maybe you didn't know that one existed, but there it is. Either or is just like or. Neither nor is just like nor. Okay, everybody got that one? Okay, so let's, let's move on. Okay, rule number three. When I is one of two subjects, connected by either or, neither or. Put it second and follow it with a singular verb. 
am. So let's look at this. Neither she nor I am going. So there's a certain way you have to structure the sentence when you are using this formula. And that is that you, if I, of course, is if I, one of the subjects, you have to put I second, follow it by am. So we're not going to say neither I nor she am. Or she is. No, we have to structure it in that way. Okay, I know I'm kind of refreshing, refreshing your memory with this. Hopefully, up to this point, you're still getting a memory refresher. Yes? Memory, ref memory refresher or not, <laughs> it better be refreshed before you take the SAT. <laughs> your memory better be refreshed because the college board, they didn't forget about this stuff. You may have forgotten about them little rules. They didn't forget about those rules. They remembered all of them. And in their customary fashion, they will test you on any rule, any point, any time, on any test. It's up to you to just know the rules. That's how it is. Okay, rule number four. Rule number four, and anybody, if somebody told you, get an American system because you know you ain't got to memorize nothing. <laughs> lied, they lied, they lied. But that's okay, we won't worry about that. It's too late now anyway. Is when a singular subject is connected by I or a nor to a plural subject, Put the plural subject last and use a plural verb. Plural subject comes last. And that's how you can determine the, the plurality of the verb. You got two subjects. One is singular, one is plural, connected by or. I'm not talking about singular now because you have to put, put that plural subject last and that's what's going to control the plurality of the verb. In that case, you got to use a plural verb. Put plural verb. The plates or serving bowl goes on that shelf. Is that, is that sentence correct? Miss, according to the rule, Miss Jenna, is that sentence correct? Because all the example sentences are correct. Of course it's correct. Yes? Yes? According to the rule, shh. Oh, Miss Jenna, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it correct? Excellent. Everyone agrees. You don't agree? Why, Mr. Lab, why you don't agree? <coughs> oh, what, what, what? I can't, let's see. I mean, uh-oh, <laughs> why is it down here? <laughs> why is it not? Can you see it at the bottom? Yeah, I know. Something, something. Actually, the bottom is supposed to be up. The bottom says, the serving bowl or the plates go on that, and we can't see the rest of the word. I don't know why it's way down there. Don't ask me. It's down there for a reason. A in any case, if you can't see that down at the bottom, this sentence is wrong based on the rule. Plates should come second, and goals should be go. Everybody got that? Yes? 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 Okay, we'll come back when we get to some examples and stuff. All right, here we go. Rule number five. Moving on up the chain. Should be getting a little more uncomfortable now. When a singular and plural subject are connected by either or, neither nor, put the plural subject last, same situation. We're just talking about the either or, neither nor connection here. Neither the others nor Jenny is available. Is that sentence correct? That sentence is not correct then? Uh-oh. What's wrong? Huh? Oh, it should be neither the others nor Jenny are available. Oh, we put the plural subject in the wrong place in this sentence. It shouldn't be like that. It should be neither the other nor the others are available. Uh, put neither, Jenny. I'm just, ju I just trying to make it fun. It shouldn't be the other. It should be Jenny. Neither Jenny nor the others are available. <laughs> I'm 
trying to make it fun with grammar rules. Okay. Yeah, you gotta have a sense of humor when you're going over the grammar. Uh, huh? Oh yeah, I see. That's like, man. <laughs> Make no money for this crowd tonight. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's continue. That's rule number five. Rule number five. Moving on. Rule number six. As a general rule, general rule, use a plural subject when two or more subjects are connect when they're connected by and. And I think a group had that one. Who had that one? Who had the and rule? You had that rule too? You had it too. Yeah, that's right. Okay, all right. There it is. So we all know the and. Well, most some of us know the and rule. This is a general rule. When two subjects or more subjects, two or more subjects are connected by and, plural verb. Now I have to think about it. It's not even something you got to think about. It's plural. A car and a bike is my means of transportation? No. Are my means. Transportation. Why? Because we got and in between car and bike. So that means it's two. Two things, not one. Okay, easy. That's an easy one. Any questions about that? That's the general rule. So let's play around with this general rule a little bit. And let's look at rule number seven and see. What's going on here? Rule number seven. Sometimes the subject is separated from the verb, which is most cases on the SAT. <laughs> I have to say, on the SAT, you, ve you, you very, very, very seldomly find the subject next to the verb when they're testing your subject-verb relationship. So, but sometimes the subject is separated by the verb from the verb by words such as along with, as well as, besides, or not, ignore these expressions. Ignore these expressions. That's the second time somebody did that? <laughs> okay, let's ignore people acting weird. Not even close. Okay. Ah, yes, ignore those expressions. Follow the subject that came before them and make your determination of whether the verb is singular or plural. Let's look at an example. The politician, along with the newsmen, is, oops, it should be R. Isn't that right, Miss Salma? Miss Salma, it should be R, right? Yes, of course. Because newsmen is plural, yes? Everyone agrees? No. What do you mean no? Huh? Yeah. Uh, 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 Salma, you, you agree with that, Salma? You agree with that? Who, who, who agrees with that? Miss Sar, you agree with that? What, what they saying? They talking about, look, we see newsmen. It's plural, right? Plural. It's plural. Newsmen is plural. Right? It should be R, right? No. no. Why not? Because it's the same Well, I, 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 Miss Sarge, just about to tell us. Go ahead. Miss Sarge, go ahead. Why? Why? Newsmen is plural. Right? Men, men, men. Yes? So it should be R, right? I'm talking Miss Saw. Miss Saw, be a leader, Miss Saw. Don't pay it. just ignore them. What do you think, Miss Saw? You don't know. Think about it. Look at the rule and make your determination. What do you think? Come on, I need a yes or no. Stay or change the is. Change X. Everyone agrees. You don't agree. Why you don't agree? Huh? Oh, but but what's wrong with this phrase? I mean, this this should. Oh, 
we're supposed to ignore it. Right, Salma? Because that's what it says in the rule. Yes. yes. So ignore those expressions, especially the stuff in between commas, because we know the stuff in between commas is not necessary. So we have to look at what came before the comma. How many politicians? One, two, one. So it should be is. Excellent. Y'all are like geniuses. OK, let's try it again. Hello. Let's try it again. Free. Talk to me. Is this in this correct? Uh, just let him do it. Let him do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. This sentence right here. Is correct? Why? The verb, the subject and verb re relationship is okay? Shouldn't be, shouldn't it be is? I mean, shouldn't it be are? Why? Let him do it. Go ahead. Why? Oh, nervousness, yes. Huh? What, what? I can't hear you. So, would you stop? Say it, Mr. Free. Nervousness, what? Because I'm excited. Yeah. What, you excited? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. All right. Oh, okay, all right. So he says excitement is, is, is two, no. or singular. And so the verb should be plural. Yes? Huh? What? It shouldn't be singular. It shouldn't be plural. Okay, all right, all right. I just want to make sure. I think we got time for one more. Okay, yes, one more. We got two minutes. That's enough time. Okay, here it is. Rule number eight. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's do it a little different this time. <laughs> I need a singular or a plural verb to complete this sentence, Miss Nadine. Now, hello. What did you need? Or what? One of the things you need here is the knowledge of the lists that you memorized when we went over pronouns. So I know you got that, because I know you didn't just like not memorize those lists. Go ahead, Ms. Nadine. Ms. Nadine, go ahead. Show off your knowledge of pronouns. Oh, one second. Fill it in. Ms. Nadine, let Ms. Nadine, thank you. Ms. Nadine, hello, hello. This is not a group activity. <laughs> Nadine, go ahead. Ms. Nadine, go ahead. Huh? What? No, verb. No, I need a verb. I need a verb. I need a verb. Let, let her answer first. Go ahead. R. You disagree? Yes. You disagree? Yes. <laughs> we have to finish tomorrow and find out why you disagree.